For small fermenters or spinner flasks, oxygen supply is typically achieved by surface aeration or by aeration through silicone rubber tubing. As the scale increases, especially over the range of 30 to 50 liters, sparging becomes more feasible, especially in the cases in which the serum concentration is relatively low. In a large-scale bioreactor, the residence time of air bubbles in the liquid medium is longer than that in a benchtop fermenter. Therefore, the airflow rate required to sustain the same oxygen consumption rate is reduced. Sparging is generally carried out in two fashions. In some cases, air bubbles are sparged through a microcarrier free zone created by a rotating screen. The screen used to separate the microcarriers for medium exchange or perfusion can also be used for direct sparging. Another example of direct sparging in a microcarrier free zone is in the circulation type rotating cylinder fermenter. In such a fermenter, air bubbles travel upward in between two stainless steel screens. No direct contact between microcarriers and air bubbles occurs. The second method of sparging is to inject a swarm of small bubbles directly into the culture. The small air bubbles are usually generated by passing air through sintered stainless steel or other porous material with small openings. The pressure drop across the sintered stainless steel is relatively small. The diameter of the bubbles ranges from 0.5 to 2 millimeters. Usually a very slow airflow rate is used. Typically it ranges much below 0.1 volume of air per volume of liquid per minute. To decrease the airflow rate, often oxygen enriched air or even pure oxygen is used to increase the driving force for oxygen transfer. The terminal rising velocity of these bubbles is usually small. Small layers of foam often accumulate in the liquid surface. In a large-scale fermenter, this does not seem to have a detrimental effect. The accumulation of microcarriers on the top of the foam is not problematic. 